Welcome back to 10, 10, 10. Today, we're looking at the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. We have three sections in the Ten Commandments. Commandments 1 to 4 cover our relationship with the Lord God. Commandments 6 to 10 cover our relationships with other people. And the fifth commandment addresses the whole concept of the family and of family relationships. And it is aimed at children of all ages. The good news is that the Bible is very positive about families because the family is God's idea. God has made us and shaped us for relationships with each other and with him. He intended families to be something powerful for good, to be places of belonging and trust, of learning and loving. The bad news is that when they go wrong, their very power can make them sites of long-lasting bitterness and hurt. God wants to help the family. He sets us an example of how to behave in a family by being the model father who cares for and nurtures us. Now, God is not saying, you know, your dad, well, God's like that. What he is saying is that God is everything a father should be. He is the perfect father, the true ideal. God is like no father anyone has ever known. He is perfectly good, faithful, true and trustworthy. He is the heavenly father who can always be relied upon. He is the ultimate parent. He is a father to the fatherless. Psalm 68, verse 5. Before I speak further, I need to acknowledge that some of you have had a very negative experience as children or parents or both. There's been abuse, absence, addictions, hurt, worse. Be assured that the father knows this, and he has never stopped loving you. What I'm about to teach may well be hard for you to hear and accept, but I would urge you to engage, for this is how you can find healing for yourself and learn how to help others. So, what does it mean to really honor our parents? The fifth commandment has a one-word formula, honor. The Hebrew word means treat as weighty. That is not the same as obey without question, although obedience is the most obvious way a young child will honor a parent, nor is it identical to love. The way some parents treat their children inspires hate, not affection, and the Bible is too realistic to ignore that. Honor does not even mean give them their due. Some elderly parents have done little or nothing to earn their adult children's gratitude. The commandments call for children of all ages to honor their fathers and mothers involves more than obedience, more than love, and more than gratitude. To honor our parents means giving them value and respect, esteeming them of worth, even if we disagree with them. It rules out entirely any attitude where we reject our parents as worthless. Instead, we must learn to accept them. Now, God isn't asking us to pretend that they are perfect when they are not, or that they're always right. We are instructed to honor our parents despite their faults and their failings. For good or ill, we must remind ourselves that they are our parents. Nothing we can do can change that. We must learn to accept them. We must learn to appreciate them. Even if we find our parents difficult, we can appreciate them for their effort in bringing us up. Parenting is a very difficult, time-consuming, and demanding job. One way we can show our appreciation is by being thankful. When was the last time you told your parents how grateful you are for all they gave you, for all they shaped in you, for all they taught you? Find practical ways to express your appreciation to them. It can make all the difference in family relationships. We must learn to affirm them. We honor and affirm our parents when we speak to them with respect and regard. 
and when we involve them in our lives. This is especially true if we have left home. It doesn't hurt to discuss work and home issues with them. We may not take their advice for whatever reason, yet for them, to know that they have been consulted is a good way of honouring them. We must avoid abandoning them. Practically, as our parents get older, the way we honour them is by not abandoning them. Each family will weigh up the particular situations their parents face as they get older. There is no doubt that at times we may feel put out, inconvenienced and frustrated. However, honouring our parents is a duty that should continue whether it is easy or hard. And we must choose to act now. There are two distinctive features about the fifth commandment. It is the only one with a promise attached to it, and it is the only command that doesn't last a lifetime. This last point is one worth pondering. A day will come when, at a hospital bedside or in the funeral parlour, we will realise that death has removed the opportunity for us to carry out this command. This, then, is an urgent command. When our parents die, it is too late and our chance is gone. We must not wait for a crisis in which death threatens either us or them to make peace with our mother or father. There are compelling reasons to start right now. To honour our parents mean to, means to obey them in our younger years, to support them in their older years, and to respect them through all the years. But this commandment works, works both ways. Yes, it says that children have a duty to honour their parents, but I believe this also implies that parents need to earn the right to be honoured. We need to work at parenting, and it is never too late to start. Enforce discipline. Discipline is an unpopular subject, but it is desperately needed, especially in the family. No parent enjoys discipline, and I'm sure all of us wish for families in which it is, it is never needed. Yet the principle of discipline is good, and indeed the Bible tells us that it is one of the characteristics of God that he disciplines those he loves. Hebrews 12 and verse 6. It is never the purpose of discipline to inflict pain or shame. It is to help teach a child so that they will learn and not harm themselves in the future. In fact, a failure to discipline is a failure to love. But the Bible gives a warning to parents to be careful whenever they discipline. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, fathers do not embitter or exasperate your children or they will become discouraged. Praise. An atmosphere of praise is the best environment for children and parents to thrive in. Parents should set the example and lead the way. One of the saddest things is to see a parent who grinds down their children. Those children end up being crushed with no self-confidence. Parents who create an atmosphere of praise will see their children grow in maturity. Parents need to learn to let go. Letting go doesn't mean letting the children do anything they want, but it does mean giving space for them to be themselves, to make their own mistakes, and sometimes to learn the hard way. Parents cannot live their children's lives for them. True love frees, protects, and ultimately releases. A great parent nurtures their children so that, first and foremost, they know Jesus for themselves with a strong faith in him as their Lord. They're confident of their relationship with their heavenly father. They are totally reliant upon the Holy Spirit. They are familiar with the Bible and they are spiritually and emotionally mature, taking their place in society and in their local church. Parents must avoid favoritism. Some members of our family are more like us and we relate to them more easily. That is not favoritism. Favoritism occurs when one child is given preferential treatment. This hurts the child who is not favoured and it fuels the fires of sibling rivalry. Good communication. I have no doubt that families talk to each other, 
but whether they communicate is another matter. When a parent is consistently too busy to spend time with their children, the message the child receives is that they are less important than work, conferences, or anyone else who might ask for mummy or daddy's time. The family ought to be the best forum to discuss problems because it should be the place of security and acceptance, where people can be honest about their feelings, their expectations and their hurts and face them head on. Even though it may get quite heated at times, it saves them growing and mushrooming into bitterness and resentment. We need to learn to communicate with each other now or we will shout at each other later. Forgiveness. Even in the best families, we will need a large dose of forgiveness. The problem with dealing with disagreements within families is that unlike the workplace or school, the people concerned are not simply going to go away. While you can choose your friends and to some lesser extent your enemies, you have to live with your family. The key ingredient to resolving disagreements and clashes within a family is a willingness to forgive and to be forgiven. Forgiveness is never easy, and there are no quick fixes. But a healthy family, with the powerful help of the Holy Spirit, will make it a first priority. Parents who delight to see their children leave the nest and make their way in the world happily relinquish their primary position as caregiver and hand them over fully to the Lord. Those parents will hear from the Lord, well done, good and faithful servants. If you had parents who made it very difficult for you to honor them, let alone love them, then now would be a great time to deal with this issue before you pass on your bad experience to your children. Thankfully, in the kingdom of God, it is never too late to start these things, even if your parents are long dead and your children grown up. But by faith, you still need to deal with the issue, preferably sooner rather than later, and trust in the sovereign, powerful, almighty God to do the impossible. <laughs>